Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, doing a review on the Fermonster Fermenters from More Beer. Hadn't planned on doing this, but I had a few issues and keep watching. I'll explain my issues. It's not that bad, but it's something just to be aware of. Don't forget to like, subscribe, keep sharing. If you find anything in this video useful, helpful, please smash that like button. Definitely appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, definitely throw them down in the comments. I read it and I know a lot of other people read the comments and you know try to help each other out. First of all, these are the six gallon Fermonster fermenters or carboys, whatever you want to call them. They refer to them as the Fermonsters. Like I said, whatever you want to call them. They come in one, three, six, and seven gallon configurations, with or without spigots, as you can see, and with or without a pre-drilled hole for a spigot. I ordered the ones with the hole, but without the spigots, and I bought the spigots in bulk because I was gonna need them for some other things too. Yes, I'll leave some uh, affiliate links down below. Some will, some won't, some won't be uh, throwing me a little chump change if you decide to buy something or you just go shopping. But that way you can go check out what I'm talking about and see what they have to offer. I will tell you a few things they come with, well, not come with, but you can buy. They, they come with that and a gas. Um, and a spigot if you buy the spigot and a hole if you buy the hole. But basically things you can buy for these are carriers, little straps for the six or seven gallon fermenter. You can get the brew built cool stick for helping to regulate the temperature. Uh, you know, if you're using a glycol system or if you just want to do a do yourself with some ice water, which it comes with a pump, it comes with an ink bird. So, and it comes with a three hole pre-drilled number 10, which this is only a one for my bubbler. They also have a kind of a mesh thing that can hang down and you can put hops or tea leaves or whatever you want to put into your beer. You might be able to, you know, pull it up onto the side with these silicone magnets. I love these. These are my new things instead of using the earth magnets. They have earth magnets in them, but they're coated in silicone. So I wash them, I put some up in the bag and I put some on the outside and when I'm ready to dry hop and it falls down into the wort or beer technically by that point, because it's pretty much done fermenting. You will need to buy a number 10 bum or stopper, whatever you want to call it. A lot of the things when you go to check out on More Beer will give you options to buy things. You can buy them there, or if you buy them in bulk, sometimes it's better to buy those smaller items somewhere else. It depends upon what you're looking for. If you just need one, just get it there, it'll be easier. Um, you can also get a lid. I'm not sure why you would need it, but you can get a lid without a hole. So, okay, on to the fermenter and on to the review. First of all, if you saw my video where we took our big mouth bubbler, which was a six and a half gallon and exposed it to some extreme heat by accident. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put it up here. But yeah, I needed two more plastic non-pressure fermenters. I went with the six gallons because I like to do wine every now and then and with six gallons of wine, you don't really want any headspace. And it works really well when I'm doing five gallon batches of beer. So it works fine. It replaced a 6.5 gallon big mouth bubbler. First of all, the things I like, uh, they're six gallons, they're light, you know, minus the beer that you put in them or the wort to be beer. The sides are pretty smooth, which makes it really easy to clean. I will say they do not clean as easily as the stainless steel fermenter from Blickman slash Anvil. And I was going through it and this one was really nice and clean. I'm re-wiping everything. This one I went inside and I'm wiping it and I realized I got a little bit of residue and I'm like, okay, obviously, uh, the alkaline and an acid, we just didn't get a good, good cleaning. So I'll have to go through it again. The other thing I realized is my arms are, I'd say pretty average for a guy. They're not super skinny and they're not big and muscular, you know what I mean? So my hand goes all the way in here and with ease, I can move around, no big deal. I've got some, some room. So if you got big arms, you might get stuck somewhere between here and here. You should still be able to get your forearm in there and get things taken care of unless you look like Popeye. You know what I'm saying? Comparing to the Big Mouth Bubbler, the opening is bigger. This is only the one gallon, but it's the same size opening. So the lid can actually go in here. So you get a little bit more room if you're built like Popeye, like I said. Now, beyond the obvious, you know, the spigot, the plastic, definitely I do transfers in my keg using the spigot. It just makes more sense than trying to stir up the wort or the beer and getting some sort of O2 in there. My concern and how I will use these in the future is I have now fully understood why Midwest 
Supply or Northern Brewer, same, pretty much same company from my understanding, uses this lovely little silicone, which I've always thought was weird. And all of these things got a little flack when they first came out over certain issues, which have all been resolved. But supposedly these used to come up easy and now they don't. But that silicone, I always have to pull the stopper off before I pull it off so I don't create a bunch of suction or problems. But I finally understand why they went for silicone. It makes a lot of sense. Over here, the screws on. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a fine little black plastic, oh, sorry, rubber O-ring gasket, whatever you want to call it. And my problem is, is after I emptied the beer out of these, I brought them upstairs, went to clean them. And, and we'll go over here. I couldn't get the lid off. It wouldn't come off. They do sell one other item that I forgot to mention, and I will be buying it next time I go to order quantity of items because I'm not going to buy a $4 item. They sell a plastic wrench that hooks right on these little notches and allows you to open it a lot easier. And you're thinking, why was that hard to open? Okay, you have one of these, it was helpful. But that little wrench I think would be even better because it's designed specifically for this. What happened, and I can only imagine because I don't remember splashing any of it, is that when this was tightened down, maybe I tightened it a little too tight, being on the safe side, want the gasket to seal nicely around the top. I must have gotten a little bit of warp either around here or around here. And as that sugar dried and crystallized, I physically couldn't turn this. I could not even rip this thing. It would not turn. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. I had to get a butter knife out and I went around every little edge and you could hear it crack, crack, crack. You could hear that sugar breaking loose. And once I got that done, pop, it turned. And I was like, that's insane. So <laughs> I now understand why they sell the wrench. Number two is when you're filling these, especially any kind of fermenter with a screw on lid, what you're gonna wanna do is clean this really good. I would say just with water, I wouldn't even use star sand, just good water. Right around, get it clean, make sure there's no mineral, because even star sand leaves a little bit of a mineral deposit and supposedly breaks down, but just water, clean it. I might even go as far as taking a tiny bit of vegetable oil on my finger. I know it sounds dumb, but it's not gonna get in the ward. It's gonna be on the outside edge lip, who cares? So, and of course I will, Go like that, right where it's about finger tight, you know, not over tight, but I can feel it locking in place. That way I shouldn't have as much problem opening it. And like I said, I'll try to score that wrench so that way I can open it up easier too in case it does lock up for some reason. But yeah, I mean, I never imagined it being that hard to open one of these. Had I, I would have planned ahead. Um, these work really well. I just used hop socks in here or Molson bags, Muslim bags, whatever you want to call them. But put the hops in, put two of these inside, put two of these on the outside. When I was ready, I pulled them, they fell in, it worked great. Overall, the fermenters did a great job, I like them. They have this weird pushed in area where the liquid goes around the outer edge. I don't know if that's a pro or a con, but I want to make sure you saw it. They're made in Canada. Don't know if that matters to anybody. This one gallon Big Mouth Bubbler, I had it out here for an example, it has like same basic little port and everything. It has a little dimple in the bottom. The difference is, is when you get to the six and a half gallon, it has that weird beveled, looks like ice or something. I don't like that bevel. I like the fermenter. I just didn't like that beveling. Um, I don't plan on doing a heat exposure to these to see if they melt at the same melting point. But overall, I'm impressed, I'm happy, and I like them, and they're serving a good purpose, of course. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, and thank you for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Thank you.